In this presentation, I will be giving an overview of how acetyl-CoA formed within the matrix of mitochondria is transported into the cytosol in preparation for fatty acid synthesis. More specifically, I'll be focusing on the citrate malate shuttle system and its link to the citric acid cycle. As stated in my previous episode, there are a number of hurdles that need to be overcome in order for fatty acids to be synthesized from acetyl-CoA. First of all, fatty acid synthesis occurs in the cytosol and not the matrix. But acetyl-CoA, as you have seen in my previous episode, is produced in the matrix of mitochondria. Based on this, fatty acid synthesis can only begin once acetyl-CoA is transported out of the matrix and into the cytosol. Secondly, the inner mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to most substances, including acetyl-CoA. In order to overcome both these issues, the metabolism has come up with a very smart transport system that I am about to discuss. Let's now draw an enlarged version of this highlighted region representing the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes, so we can look at the finer detail of how this transport system works. Let's begin with a representation of an enlarged segment of the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes and the intermembrane space. In short, this outer region separates the matrix from the cytosol. As stated earlier, the story begins on the matrix side and more specifically with acetyl-CoA. Since acetyl-CoA cannot be transported directly across the inner mitochondrial membrane to the cytosol, its two carbons highlighted in red are transferred by two transport mechanisms, namely the citrate and malate transport systems which make up the citrate-malate shuttle. Step 1 begins with the two carbons from acetyl-CoA being added to the four carbons from oxaloacetate to give the six carbon compound known as citrate. Now during step one, the CoA from acetyl-CoA is cleaved off, as seen in the illustration. Now for those of you who have a good working knowledge of the metabolism, you may also recognize this first step as also being the first step of the citric acid cycle, and you would be 100% correct. The production of citrate allows the two carbons from acetyl-CoA to hitch a ride across and into the cytosol via the citrate transporter. This represents step two of the process. You might also notice that the transporter only extends across the inner mitochondrial membrane and not the outer membrane. As you might be aware from my previous presentations, the inner membrane is impermeable to most substances while the outer membrane is not, hence the need for transporters within the inner mitochondrial membrane. Once citrate is in the cytosol, it enters into step 3. Here it offloads its two carbon passengers which combine with coenzyme A to regenerate acetyl-CoA while also reforming oxaloacetate. In short, this is a reversal of the first step and requires energy in the form of ATP to allow it to go to completion. During step four, oxaloacetate is reduced to give malate by NADH. NADH is oxidized in the process to give NAD+. This also happens to represent the reverse of step number eight in the citric acid cycle. During step five, the four carbons now within malate are transported back into the matrix through the malate transporter. Finally, during step number six, malate is oxidized back to oxaloacetate by NAD+, which is subsequently reduced to NADH. Now, for those of you who may be interested, this happens to also represent the final step of the citric acid cycle. So in summary, this whole process allows for the continual transfer of two carbon units of acetyl-CoA originating within the matrix to the cytosol 
where they subsequently become available for fatty acid synthesis. In my next episode, I'll be focusing on the steps involved in the synthesis of fatty acids from acetyl-CoA. So please subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this presentation to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.